So here we go. We're going to do my first reaction video on the show. It's the Encanto about the Mirabelle and Abuela fight. All right, uh, Nate Douglas, <laughs> roll it what up. What is going on? Abuela, it's okay. Everything's... We're going to save the miracle. The magic. What are you talking about? Look at our home. Look at your sister. Please, just... Isabella wasn't happy and Of she course didn't... she isn't happy. You ruined her proposal. No, 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 she needed me to ruin her proposal. And then we did all this <sighs> and the candle burned brighter and the crust. Mirabel. That's why I'm in the vision. I'm saving the miracle. You have to stop, Mirabel. The crack started with you. Bruno left because of you. Luis is losing her powers. Isabella is out of control because of you. I don't know why you weren't given a gift, but it is not an excuse for you to hurt this family. Whew, okay, stop it right there. So they're having two different conversations here. Mirabelle, that's, that's the young, young woman, right? Mirabelle is simply saying, can you see me? Can you see the good that I'm bringing to our home? And Abuela is saying, grandmother is saying, you are in service to the bigger machine here. The facade is more important than what you, your little feelings, what you think. Do you see me versus know your place here? Whew, what's one of the most common family, like they're just talking past each other. And they're, both of their hearts are exploding in opposite directions, even though they're staring each other in the eye. All right, hit play. I will never be good enough for you. Will I? No matter how hard I try, No matter how hard any of us tries, Luisa will never be strong enough. Isabella won't be perfect enough. All right, hit pause here. Okay, common move. I was, I was all team Mirabelle, but now she's triangulating people. Now she's dragging other family members into the formation of her boundaries. Now, how old is she in this movie? Is she like 21 yeah, or tw she's seven? Early 20s, no. Okay, she's, if she's seven, yeah. I don't want to be like, suck it up, seven-year-old. If you're 21, 22, this is where, like, there's this, this is like the revelation, right? This is when you start to realize, oh, my mom's always going to be like this. My dad will never say the words, I'm proud of you. My husband or boyfriend will never hear my needs, right? These are these moments, but it's then when you go, and my, my girlfriend, she sees it too, or... Yeah, and my dad also, and now I'm looping everybody in to the formation of my boundary, and that's a mess. When you start to have these realizations that, oh, this is going to be the way this always, you are going to be the way you always are. I'm the one who's got to change here. What I love people to do is to say, these are my boundaries. I'm going to use I statements here. This is for me. My sister can watch this happen, and then she can choose to have her own boundaries. My brother can too. This is about me. Okay, hit play. I'm all into this, family, man. Family, because you only saw the worst in Bruno him. Bruno didn't care about this family. He loves this family. Ooh. I <laughs> love this family. We all love this family. You're the one that doesn't care. You're the one breaking our home. Don't you the ever. The miracle is dying because of you. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, so... <sighs> This is when things were going well, and then it turns Hollywood. The face. So if you're listening to this, well, grandmother just had the face, right? The, <gasps> right? Like the face of, oh, no, you're right. For the last 50 years, I've excluded my son. I've kept my thumb over everybody. This doesn't happen in reality. Very, very rare. And it doesn't happen with the music swelling. And there's this great big thing. This idea, like this magic sentence. I'm just going to say the magic sentence. I was working with somebody the other day and they said, I'm just waiting for that, that, one, that one thing that someone's going to say that's going to cut through it. And I finally said, that thing's not coming. 
right? So we have this picture that when we create boundaries, the music's gonna swell and we're gonna say our boundary across the table. We're gonna come to the realization and they're gonna go, oh, it was me. That never happens. Usually it ends with, I hate you, get out of my house or fine then, or I'm taking you out of the will or then I'm gonna start seeing somebody else, right? We wait for this fantasy moment, this perfect catharsis and it doesn't happen, right? This, uh, so Abuela's, so y'all, I haven't seen, I've seen it, but I fell asleep halfway through with my kids. I was tired. And I, now I'm going to go back and watch it. It looks amazing. But here's what's important. Like, it sounds like Abuela created a story. She got deeply hurt and she created a story to move this family along. And the story in the short term created a lot of beauty and a lot of cool things. And there's a lot of things that she could talk about when it came to her kids, a select group of her grandkids. Is that right? Close, yeah. It's everybody but Mirabelle has a gift. Has a gift, right? So, right. But, but it comes out of this pain, right? The, the other, the, the, another gift wasn't recognized, the son, right? And he got kicked out or he left or something. People didn't like his gift. He, it was like telling people like what was gonna happen in their life. It's a gift of a prophet, right? Yeah. And so they, yeah, prophets always get run out of their town. Okay, so he had this gift of prophecy, right? And Abuela's heartbroken. Deep down, she is heartbroken. And instead of dropping her shoulders and weeping and leaning into that grief, she created an entire system that props herself up and the whole family up. And when you do that, it inevitably crumbles around you. Like, I guess that's what, is that what happens here? Everything crashes and, and then flowers are going to bloom at the end, right? Is that how that works? Kind of, yeah. I can just hear people going, no, that's not how that goes, Right. I mean, she's reacting out of this trauma that she experienced when the gift was created. So everything that she's doing now is pretty much an act of fear of, I've lost my husband, we lost everything, and this gift was born out of this grief. So so we're going to hang on to this thing? Yeah, so she is like desperately hanging on to it because she doesn't want to lose her family again. And she's pouring all of that into like the gift. She's like, we've got this gift, so we, we can't let it go. Uh, okay, also, she's, so the, the thing that kept her alive is gonna be the thing that crushes her entire system, right? Gosh, that's great. So all along, yes, realizing that the thing that kept us going, the thing that got me through the hard thing can also turn into the thing. Like being able to hide when I had an abusive dad is gonna be the thing that, that ruins my marriage down the road. The thi like um, learning how to stand up for myself and to protect my little brother from getting abused is gonna be the thing that gets me put in jail for violence, right? So these things that help protect us early on can be the things that ultimately, and that we create identities around them, but they can be the things that ultimately drag us underwater later on. And all this goes back to whew, the greatest gift you can give your family and your children and your kids is to see them to love them along the way, even if at, at, this, at the beginning they don't look like they have gifts. And for those of you who are practicing thinking about learning to create boundaries, there's no big music at the end. There's usually a lot of guilt and there's a lot of exhaustion and there's tears and it's right. You can create your boundaries. It's good. There's no music that plays. Ugh, I wish it did, though. I think someone should just follow me around with a boombox for when I set a boundary and it goes, turns it up, make my heart feel all good. <laughs> it just doesn't, doesn't happen.